Hi everyone, Jason Allard here, and today I wanted to run through some of my favorite gear for my Abandoned From Above series, as well as for filmmaking in general. So I have two main sets of equipment that I tend to use. The first is for in-studio shoots, and for those shoots, it tends to be more stationary equipment, exactly what I'm using right now for this video shoot, where it's more conversational and documentary style. And then the second set of equipment that I use is for my Abandoned From Above series and urban exploration. And that equipment needs to be a lot lighter, portable, easy to set up and break down. So there is crossover between the two, but I thought it'd be fun to go through and explain what I use and why I use it. One of the things that's most important to me is getting the most use out of what you already have. So you seriously don't need to go out and buy the newest camera body, the newest lens, the newest drones every time something new drops. It's not about the specs that the gear has, it's about knowing how to frame a story and just getting clean shots. So for example, 4K doesn't really matter if everything you shoot looks like it was filmed during an earthquake, right? Let's get into it. My top 10, in no particular order by the way, pieces of gear and equipment that I use. First up is the DJI Spark. This is the first drone that I bought and I am still using it today almost three years later. DJI is, in my opinion, the best drone company out there, and this little guy is a testament to their build quality. It still gets regular updates, and the quality still keeps up, despite the tech being from 2017. Unfortunately, the Spark is now discontinued, so I would recommend any other drone by DJI. If you do get one, they always have what's called the Fly More Combo, which comes with extra batteries, propellers, chargers, and other accessories. And the extra batteries alone are worth it. So just do it! Make your dreams come true! At three years old, I plan to use this Spark until it's not updated anymore. So if you do get a DJI drone, expect it to last a long time. And if anyone from DJI is watching, please feel free to sponsor me at any time. Next up is the DJI Smart Case, and this thing is amazing. It's always with us on every shoot, pretty much. This is basically an all-in-one charging hub, so if we're out in the middle of nowhere, which we usually are, we can still charge the drone batteries, phones, lights, and camera batteries. It's been a lifesaver on so many shoots, especially the abandoned ones, when there's obviously no electricity around. I highly recommend getting this one, or one like it, if you're getting a drone. Okay, I promise this is the last DJI product on my list, but it's one of my favorite cameras of all time. Think of this as a drone minus the props. Look at how tiny this is. The Osmo has a built-in gimbal that you can control manually for extremely steady shots, full manual settings, and as a bonus, you can pair this up with your phone to use as a screen to access the settings. The raw footage out of this is already professional quality, but once I add in my color grading and stabilization, it really gives a cinematic look, all from this tiny camera. I relied on this camera a lot at the abandoned prison remains that we visited, which you can see here. It's the perfect tool for capturing footage quickly, so it's always in my camera bag no matter what the shoot is. This is my main portable LED light. It attaches directly to the camera, so it follows your shots automatically as you move. Much more convenient than a flashlight, and in some cases it's brighter. It also uses camera batteries, which you would have on you anyway. This light is nice because it allows you to adjust the warmth of the light on the back. There's also a knob on the back, and if you crank that thing all the way up... No, just kidding. Could you imagine? I just edited that in. That'd be crazy bright. This is us walking through the basement of an abandoned bank. 
I set it to low so it wouldn't flood the area and I could remain at least a little bit scared and really convey just how dark and creepy it was down there. I bought this light ahead of a shoot in an abandoned train tunnel, which you can see here. It kept up with the news crew's light, so I was instantly impressed. If it can light up a cave like this, you're good for whatever kind of shoot you have planned. This is my Gikodo tripod. I use this one when traveling, on the go, and in the studio. I use it for everything, pretty much. It's extremely light at only 3 pounds, compared to the majority of tripods that come in around 10 pounds. Here's two of them in action, on the set. And then my favorite way to use it is as an additional stabilizer as I'm carrying the camera, so it's not completely handheld. It gives you a lot more control over camera movement as you walk around. I've used dozens of tripods, and I'd recommend this one first every time. It's that good. Next up is my gear bag. I have a lot of camera bags with different sizes depending on the project, but for shoots in remote locations, this is my main guy. It's got pockets everywhere for all my stuff, plus snacks of course. And the best part of bags specifically designed for camera gear is the tripod holster on the side. So you end up feeling just like a cowboy when you're ready to set up a shot. It's great. Long story short, if you need a bag for all of your stuff at the same time, can't go wrong with this one. Next up is my main DSLR camera. This is a Canon 5D Mark IV, and this is what we use primarily in the studio. It's not as quick to set up as something like the Osmo Pocket or the Spark, so it makes more sense to leave it in a more controlled environment like a studio. Sometimes I do leave the studio with it. For example, this music video for Brianna White's song Closer that I directed. I highly recommend you go check it out right now. Not every shoot is as serious. For example, this music video my friends and I shot in our spare bedroom in front of a green screen. You can really see the quality of that Canon 5D here as Eric and I ride by on a dolphin. I have nothing but good things to say about that camera. Let's move on to the lenses now, which is arguably the most important part of a camera setup. The lens you choose makes the biggest difference on picture quality and composition. You can have an old camera body, but when you throw a high-end or specialized lens on, it'll modernize the look real quick. Okay, well that's too old. Yep, still too old. Okay, that'll work. Let's, let's go with this one. This is a modern wide aperture lens on a seven-year-old camera. And this is the quality I was able to pull. You can see the image is sharp, there's no distortion or artifacts, and everything that I want is in frame. To be fair, the subject automatically makes this shot insane, so it wasn't too hard, but not too shabby there. I have three main lenses that I switch between, so I'll quickly show you what each one does and why I use it. We'll start with the smallest, this Canon 28mm wide-angle lens. This gives you the benefits of a fisheye lens without the distortion. So let me show you an example. This was shot with a GoPro with a super wide angle fisheye lens. And you can see right here on the pillars the distortion that I'm talking about. It appears that they kind of bow outward. There's nothing wrong with this style, but for me personally, it can be kind of distracting in a shot and it doesn't allow for a lot of depth in the image. I tend to use this lens for establishing shots in my videos when I really want to showcase the scope of some of these places that I visit, since it gives you a lot of freedom to fit a lot on screen. Second is this Rokinon 35mm wide aperture lens. This lens is completely manual. There's no autofocus on it, and there's no automatic aperture settings on it. But once you get the hang of it, it gives you a ton of flexibility for controlling the depth of field and the amount of light into the camera. I use this lens for all of the intro shots in this video, so you can see how shallow the depth of field is. Anything beyond 6 inches is blurry, so you can get pretty artsy with it. If we take it over to the Ellie cam, you can see what I mean. Just her paw and her tail is in focus, everything else is completely blurred out, and there's no post-production on this. This is exactly what it looks like coming out of the camera. And now, for my favorite lens of all time, the Canon 70-200mm. 
I use this lens for any interview projects and I'm using it to record myself for this video. Let's take it to the Ellie cam to see that cinematic quality in action. It really is just a perfect all-in-one lens for documentary shots, photography, and just general filmmaking. Now let's take it out to a triple view so you can compare all of these at the same time. Each one has its benefits depending on what you're looking to use it for, but hopefully this provides some background on them for you. Next is my Blue Snowball microphone. I was able to boost my voiceover quality pretty dramatically recently. And that's thanks to this USB condenser mic, which plugs right into the computer. It'll give you production, studio quality audio, right from home. It's pretty crazy. Let's do a comparison between my MacBook's built-in microphone that I used to use versus the Blue Snowball microphone that I use now. In the Woods is a massive broadcast array with six towers that used to run 50 kilowatts of power. In the Woods is a massive broadcast array with six towers that used to run 50 kilowatts of power. I think we can all agree a big congratulations to the Blue Snowball on its victory over the MacBook Pro. If you're looking to do voiceovers on your videos, I highly recommend this mic. Finally, my editing software, Final Cut Pro 10. This is my favorite part of video production when I get to sit down, build the story, and just edit. This is the timeline for my latest video, The Abandoned Prison Camp in Island House. One of the edits in this project that was amped about was a motion freeze frame of me and Eric walking in the woods. I had to draw a custom mask around each of us and then overlay that image. It took a while to refine the points and get it to look pretty seamless. This maybe took an hour for about a five second clip, but worth it. And that wraps up my top 10 pieces of gear and equipment. I'm going to leave links to everything in this video in the description below to make it easy in case you want to get some of this gear for yourself. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions on anything I covered or any specific gear, then feel free to just send me a message or leave a comment down below and I will definitely get back to you.